We're back again to talk with Professor Daniela Bordoletto at Purdue University to discuss one of the projects he's working on, which is to build a better detector for particles that are coming out of these particle accelerators that she works with. If you remember last week, we took a picture of a cloud chamber, which showed little tiny particles, radioactive particles, gamma rays and things, passing through a cloud chamber and making little tiny lines. Well, if we find out where these particles are and where they're headed, we can learn about what kind of particles they are. And so what we're going to discuss today is the project that uh, Professor Bordoletto is building to make a really good detector so we can know even better and more precisely just where particles are located and what their flight path looks like. And that will tell us what kind of particle they are and we can learn about them. At Purdue University, we have a laboratory to build uh, silicon detectors for particle physics. Uh, a silicon detector looks like this. And um, this was one of the old silicon detectors that we have built for an experiment running at Cornell. And the idea here is that you can imagine that you have colliding beams that are entering in this detector. When they are smashing against each other, you have a bunch of particles that are flying out. Okay? Once uh, the, these, pieces, pieces of, the, these detectors will record the position of each charged particle that is being created in this interaction. Um, in this specific case, each sensitive element consists of a tiny little strip. So in a sense, you know the position only along the strips. You don't have a precise indication of where the particle went in space. The next detectors that we are building are sort of going a step forward and they are detecting precisely, pinpointing precisely where the detector went uh, in space. We are going to go in our pixel detector uh, laboratory here and we have to keep uh, dust out of the laboratory and so we have to wear booties and also an air net so that uh, we don't have dust coming on the chips. In the next generation of a, a silicon detector, instead of having strips, we are having very tiny little pixels. Uh, this is an example of uh, one of uh, the uh, detectors that we will use for um, a, a pixel detector for the LHC. Uh, in this specific case, um, this element that you see here contains already about uh, 24,000 pixels, which you can't see on naked eye because each of the pixels has uh, a dimension of 100 times 150 microns. Remember that uh, uh, the dimension of your air is about 20, uh, 75 microns. So these are really tiny and so you really have to put them under a microscope in order to see the details of each pixel. Um, another, uh, so a pixel detector it's a little bit like a, a camera that you can buy at a store and that you can use, uh, for example, even on your, on your telephone. Uh, but the pixels that we are developing have to have some special characteristics. Our detector element so has a different shape because uh, we want to, uh, to create a, um, a disk and we will have uh, four disks two in the front and two in the back. So you really have to imagine that the beam will collide in the middle of this, which represents a beam pipe. This is a model of what we are doing. And uh, uh, each of these disks will look a little bit like this. So you see that it's about uh, 10 centimeter in, uh, in, 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 in dimension. And uh, the disk will have uh, is made up of uh, these things that are called blades, which are arranged in a turbine geometry and each blade is made up by a front panel and a back panel and the front panel includes these uh, plaquettes which are our modules, we just invented this name plaquettes and uh, for example in the front panel that you see here you have one plaquette which has uh, two chips and it's the smallest plaquette here at the bottom 
and then there is uh, the longest plaquette up here, which has five chips, and in the back uh, we have the smallest plaquette as it contains uh, six chips, and the biggest one on the back contains uh, uh, ten chips. Um, the thing, why did we choose to do that? The thing that you have to understand is that the elements that are sensitive are only this area where you have the readout chip, uh, not this uh, other area here. So by having a different geometry on the front and the back panel, all the, um, we can detect particles over the whole area of the plate. The purpose of uh, a silicon detector, a track detector, is to measure very precisely the position of the particle coming up of the interaction between, for example, a proton or uh, a proton, like we will have at LHC. So you should imagine the beam of proton and antiproton coming in inside this, uh, this tube, they collide in the middle here, and we are going to have a spray of particle created because we have energy available in the collision, and therefore we have a lot of particles that then decay in other particles often, and the pixel detectors will allow us to measure extremely precisely uh, the position of each of these particles in space. The precision that we reach is about 10, less than 10 micron, uh, which is less than a human hair. So the exciting things about this detector is, first of all, rather than just strips of detections, it's actually making a grid so we know exactly where each particle is when it passes through. And the second part is now that we know even more precisely where these particles are going to be or where they are, right, then we can tell even more precisely just what kind of particle they are. So until next time, it's been Dr. Carlson Science Theater, interview style. What is uh, your favorite part of your job? My favorite part of uh, the job is uh, really um, uh, form uh, the new research of, uh, uh, in physics. Uh, you know, I really feel like there are many important questions that remain to be answered. I mean, uh, we really are, in my opinion, at the verge of uh, a lot of discovery in elementary particle physics. Uh, you know, we might understand what is dark matter, uh, we might understand if the expansion of the universe is, uh, uh, is uh, accelerating uh, and all of these really give us a hint of what is the future of the universe and uh, um, I really have enormous pleasure uh, not only trying to answer this question myself but seeing the next generation of scientists uh, trying to carry out this uh, understanding of the most fundamental law of nature.